Tech, my business cards finally came. <laughs> you, you ordered the uh, business cards, George? 10,000 of them. <laughs> I wanted you and Joanna to have the first two. George Utley. No address? No phone number? No occupation? What's the point? Everybody in town knows where I live and what I do. <laughs> well, then, then why do you need a business card, George? It impresses the babes, Dick. <laughs> Hello, old man. How have you been? Pretty, pretty good, young, young man. <laughs> who, who, who are you? Why, I'm Scooter Drake. Who? Oh, Scooter Drake. Uh, Stephanie and I met him at a, a snobby party in, in New York. <laughs> not, not, not that, not that you were that snobby. Really, I thought I was perfectly snobby. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hi, I'm Joanna Loudon, and that's George Utley. My card. <laughs> George Utley. Well, if I ever need one, you can be found here. Yep, lovely. Steffi about. Uh, Steffi Scooter's here. <laughs> Why do I feel like I'm in an Archie comic? <laughs> Hi, I thought I smelled old money. <laughs> Try as I may, I can't rid myself of that blasted smell. I do hope it doesn't offend. Well, it was pretty bad when you walked in, but I, I can, <laughs> can hardly notice it now. So where's your darling little girlfriend, Libby? Oh, that's right. It's spring liposuction time. <laughs> I'm afraid Libby's left me for another. Another what? Another man, George. That's not what the gossip mongers are saying. Oh, well, what brings you to Vermont? Well, since Libby left me, I've been feeling a bit under, so I thought I'd motor on up here and do some shopping. That often cheers me. Scooter, Vermont is hardly the place to shop. Unless you're interested in maple candy, I suggest you try Paris. Uh, actually, I, I've had this urge to buy a quaint New England inn. Then, then don't go to Paris. <laughs> what kind of inn are you in the market for? Oh, dear. Is that something I should have thought about? Well, it, it took us a year to find the Stratford. We did research, talked to people, drove all over. Well, I'd like to have mine by nightfall. <laughs> Joanna, you can help Scooter find an inn. I mean, aren't you, like, in real estate or something? So you do pay attention when I talk about my life. Sometimes I can't shut it out. <laughs> if you're really interested, I'd love to help. We could go look at my listings right now. Splendid. Uh, come on, Stephanie. Why, if there's two I like, you could flip the coin. Or you can buy both. My, you are a help. <laughs> Boy, imagine buying an inn to get over being depressed. When I'm blue, I rent It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. <laughs> and, that, and that cheers you up, George? Yeah, for a while. Then I think about all the actors in the movie who are dead, and I get blue again. <laughs> hi. Oh, hi, Michael. Shh, shh, shh. I'm on the lamb from my ex-lamb chop. It's, it's okay, Michael. She's in the dining room. Oh, all right. You, you can say my name. I don't think I need to anymore. <laughs> How's the uh, job hunting going? Dick, I've decided to keep my nose out of other people's businesses and start one of my own. One that requires minimal capital and yet will enable me to afford food again. <laughs> <laughs> Watch. You're going to pull taffy? Uh, Michael, are, are you saying you're going to be a mime? You know what they say, everybody loves a mime. No, everybody loves a clown. People try to run over mimes. <laughs> well, nobody's going to maim this mime. <laughs> Michael, are, are you sure this town is ready for a mime? I, I don't think they've ever... 
they've ever seen one before. That's right. They might mistake you for the village idiot. <laughs> he used to pull on invisible taffy, too. You know, Scooter, we might have better luck if we see some of these inns in person. Well, I agree. I, I always like to caress the things I buy. Well, good. I'll go call some of the inns and tell them we're coming. Maybe you can fondle the Henderson place. <laughs> you know, just the thought of buying some places lifting my spirits. Well, the way I see it, there are four stages to breaking up. First denial, then shopping, <laughs> then hating the other person's guts so much you would like to see them fry in the flames of eternal hell. <laughs> then more shopping. <laughs> I'm at the third stage with Michael. Would you like some more coffee? I mean, as grotesque as it all is, I am the maid. You shouldn't feel grotesque. My great-grandfather used to say there's no shame in any job. As long as you do it well, it inspired the workers in his sweatshops to keep plugging away. <laughs> Until they were old enough to go to school. <laughs> Sounds like he was a great man. He was a monster, actually, but an absolute delight at parties. <laughs> Listen, I've got an idea. After I buy my inn, why don't we go out and celebrate our freedom from Libby and Michael? What's the best restaurants in town? Uh, Maison Hubert, but I could never go back there again. That's where I had my last horrible date with Michael before he dumped me. Did I mention that I'd like to see him fry in hell? <laughs> I believe you did, but you know the old saw. When you fall off your polo pony, remount and use the whip. You know what's interesting about dust? It, it could be so many things. No matter how much you clean, the stuff keeps coming back. Has it occurred to you that it's supposed to be here and we're tampering with God's plan? Who, who signs your, your paychecks, him or me? Oh, how was inn shopping? Scooter didn't like anything he saw. The inns we looked at were all so, um, red. Well, couldn't you show him something in a different color? Haven't either of you ever heard of paint? That would be like buying a sweater in the wrong color and then dyeing it. <laughs> One certainly wouldn't do that. <laughs> Joanna might. <laughs> I wish you could find me something like this. Well, the Stratford is pretty run-of-the-mill compared to some of the places I've shown you. I wouldn't call it run-of-the-mill. <laughs> Dusty, maybe, but... <laughs> I mean, that's God's doing. Everything here is so perfect, though. The, the, the fixtures, the fireplace, even Stephanie posing over there looks absolutely perfect. You should see this place when the morning sun reflects off my hair. <laughs> People say it's breathtaking. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a million dollars for it. You, you, want, you want to buy the Stratford for, for a million dollars? Ooh, you've got the art of haggling down to a science. <clears throat> a million three, take it or raise it. Uh, what? I left myself open for that one. All right, a million five. Well, I, I know it's a lot of money, but I'm, I, I'm not sure I can, I can bring myself to, to sell this place. If we did, we'd be set for life. And do you have any idea how much my commission would be? <laughs> Joanna, the, the seller pays the commission. You'd be paying yourself. Who cares? The important thing is it'll put me in the Million Dollar Club at the office. I'll get a pin. <laughs> oh, well, let's dump this place if it, if it means you're getting a pin. Hi, everybody. Oh, hi, George. Listen, we need your advice on something. Uh, Scooter has offered to buy the inn, and uh, we're trying to decide whether or not to, to sell. Sell a Stratford? You can't. The Stratford is like a home to us. George, it, it is a home to us. 
Well, my advice is don't sell. He's offered us a million five. Then my advice is sell. <laughs> See, Dick, George thinks we should sell. George isn't everybody. I like to think I am. <laughs> of course, it is ironic. I live here my whole life, and the day I get my business cards, we move. Jo Joanna, why, why are you so quick to unload this place? I, I thought you, you loved it as much as I do. I do. We have seven years of wonderful memories here, but if somebody is crazy enough to offer us that kind of money, we ought to be crazy enough to consider it. Hi, I'm Larry. This is my brother, Daryl, and this is my other brother, Daryl. We heard there was a Scooter Drake here. We grew up with a Scooter Drake, and we was wondering if it was one and the same. My guess would be no. Does this Scooter Drake have a pineapple birthmark on his right buttock? Pineapple. Um, pineapple. No. Listen, fellas, Dick has a question for you. Uh-oh, Daryl, pop quiz. It's, uh, it's, it's like this. Uh, we've been offered uh, a million five for, for the inn. Dynamite! <laughs> one of us uh, feels that uh, we should take it, and one of us isn't so sure. Daryl wants to know who the jerk is who isn't so sure. <laughs> I, I don't think any purpose would be served by, by naming names. It's Dick. You see, Dick, the fellas think we should sell. Even they know a million five is a lot of money. A million five? We thought you said a million flies. <laughs> Mademoiselle Van der Kuleen, I did not think I would be seeing you again. <laughs> Is this another loser du jour? Here you go, old French chap. <laughs> that, that loser remark. <laughs> Mademoiselle and I, we make with the petite. <laughs> Follow me, mes amis. For you, the finest table in the house. <laughs> Oh, Jabel, did you miss me as much as I missed you? They say sometime late at night she cries out for you. <laughs> Ube, I'll bring us a bottle of Dom Perignon, please. But of course. Howdy, <laughs> bottle of Dom Perignon, too sweet! Howdy! <sighs> this is the way it used to be with Michael. People scurrying at our commands. How I miss the simple pleasures of life. <laughs> My apologies for the delay. Oh, seven seconds isn't really long. And now that you've established a time, you'll have something to beat. <laughs> Would you like to see the menus now? Later, Henri. <laughs> A toast to Libby and Michael. May they forever be part of our past. Good riddance. <laughs> What is that? I think it's a mime screaming in the rain. Let's applaud. Perhaps it'll go away. It worked. Well. <laughs> what have we here? So you couldn't wait, could you? 
I thought mimes were supposed to be fairly quiet. <laughs> Run along now, you wet, white-faced street performer. I know what's going on here. Come first. I'm a mime, not the village idiot. Michael. In black and white. <laughs> this is Michael? Well, he's not at all as I'd pictured. How do you do, young mime? Scooter Drake. <laughs> Oh, I see you found yourself a new boyfriend. And he's so cute. Why, thank you. So sweet of you to notice. But we're only having dinner. Scooter and I are just friends. Oh, sure. Steffi and Scooter sitting in a tree. K I S S I N G. I do not like memes. <laughs> you people are the reason I left France. <laughs> I have as much right to be here as anyone else. Just because I have no money in my hat is no reason I should be treated like garbage. Oof. And you, you two were out there watching me for 20 minutes and you didn't give me a damn nickel. <laughs> what, because I'm a mime, you thought I wouldn't say anything? He thought you were the village idiot. <laughs> Well, could the village idiot do this? Michael, stop it! I can't hear you, Steffi. Can't you see I'm in a box? <laughs> Michael, you're dripping makeup on my purse. Oh, sorry, my career is a little messy. <laughs> Not all of us have a job where we get to work. Oh, my God. Is that a $2,000 suit? Well, not counting the trips to Italy for the fittings. I want that suit! Michael! I want that suit! I deserve it! I worked hard! I did everything right! <laughs> and now, I'll never get to have a suit like that. Never! <laughs> Give it to me! Give it to me! You can have my leotard! Just let me have the suit! Michel! Richard! Dispose of this meme! You haven't seen the last of Mike Laris. I'll be back, if not as a mime, then as a human mannequin. <laughs> or as a dog-faced boy. <laughs> How did everyone enjoy the show? <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've called about just about everyone I know, and, and they think I should sell. Well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure I want to. A, a million five. I, I, I have what for brains? <laughs> well, if, if, if that's how you feel, love, love to Dad. Bye. What did your mom say? Uh, she's, uh, she's, uh, she's on the fence. <laughs> oh, how was dinner at Maison Hubert? <laughs> <laughs> did, did she have the clams? <laughs> Actually, we, we had a rather unpleasant experience with her estranged beau. He's an extraordinary mime, visually, don't get me wrong, but he... Well, he tends to undercut his performance by crying and screaming incessantly. That's, that's the worst kind of mime. So, any decision about selling the inn? Uh, my, my answer is, is yes. And, and no one, not, not even... Not even my mother has, has influenced me in this decision whatsoever. Marvel. <laughs> well, old man, I'll have my people call your people. I, I, don't, I don't have any people. <laughs> Why, I thought everybody had people. Oh, well, with the money you make, you can buy some people. <laughs> Scooter, it's for you. Libby Harcourt. <clears throat> How did that conniving she-devil track me down? <laughs> you know, Joanna, it just hit me. We're... 
We're going to have money. I know. If we wanted, we could afford a Volvo station wagon. <laughs> and, and I won't have to buy that, that Civil War chess set one piece at a time. <laughs> Oh, what the heck with a, with a million and a half dollars I can I can buy every pewter thing the Franklin men ever made <laughs> well mustache Libby wants me back to wrap around her little finger again ah oh, the simple pleasures of life having a fair hair maiden by one side and 310 million to roll around in D don't don't you mean 308.5 you are still buying me in well, I should think not. The witch is back, so the inn is out. Hi. I'm Larry. This is my brother, Daryl. Scooter Drake? Larry! Daryl! Daryl! Oh, dick, dick, dick. You should have looked closer at Scooter's right butter. What are you doing here? I thought you'd be in Palm Beach for the polo season. Normally I would, but I had this urge to buy a New England Inn. <laughs> Uh-oh, Daryl, he's been shopping. That could only mean that you and Libby have split up yet again. <laughs> You've reconciled, dear Larry. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do with you two. <laughs> Listen, why don't the three of you motor down with me to the city? The crowd would love to see you again. You know, we haven't been to New York since the opening of Phantom. <laughs> Come on, Daryl. Let's go choose to see who gets to ride in the trunk. Thank, thank you. <laughs> well, my scoot, hence the name. Do give Steph a bye. How, uh, wait, how, how, about, how about a million three? I'll, I'll, even, I'll even throw in the handyman. He, he comes with his own business card. <laughs> We just lost a million and a half dollars. Yeah, but, you know, look at it this way. You know, it's, it's the simple pleasures of life. A fair-haired maiden by your side and, uh... A million, <laughs> million flies to roll around with. How does this sound for, for my next how-to book? Turning that old newspaper rack into a new magazine rack. Sounds more like a how-to sentence. I, I, I don't know what's wrong. I guess I'm how-to'd out. Well, maybe you should take a few months off. Honey, I, I'm a writer. I, I was born with a, a need to express my thoughts. I mean, literature is is the legacy of, of my very soul. How about writing a novel? Too thick. <laughs> How about a how-to book for kids? You know, that's, that's not a bad idea. I, I, listen to this. Turning Dad's old newspaper rack <laughs> into a neat comic book rack. Well, maybe with some work. <laughs> Uh, 
Hello, Stratford Inn. Michael? Wh where have you been all week? We we've been worried about you. B very worried. On, on a scale of one to ten? <laughs> uh, a, a seven. No, a seven is good. M Michael, where, where, where are you? Who, who are you visiting at Ridge Valley Sanitarium? You're, you're visiting you? <laughs> are you sure you don't want some cake? Oh, George, it may be cake to you, but to me it's a bulge looking for a thigh to land on. <laughs> oh, okay, Michael, we'll, we'll see you later this afternoon. Of, of course we missed you. An eight. <laughs> see, see you later. Where is Michael? Not that I give a flying fud. <laughs> At the Ridge Valley Sanitarium. Ridge Valley? Oh, that's the you-know-what farm. <laughs> Gee, I've pushed men to the edge before, but I've never chucked one over. <laughs> I didn't know I had the power to turn a man into a raving lunatic. Oh, I'm sure he's not a raving lunatic. Is he, Dick? <laughs> On a scale of one to ten? <laughs> Michael, are you okay? You'd be hard-pressed to find any fiddles fitter than I. <laughs> why, why do you ask? No reason, just kind of a wacky thing to ask somebody in the sanitarium. Last we heard, you were doing street mime. Well, Jojo, there was this small disturbance in a restaurant. Apparently, some people get a tiny bit nervous around mimes who scream like banshees. <laughs> Go figure. Anyway, I guess it hit me all at once. I lost my job, my credit, and a repo squad took everything from A to Turbo Z. <laughs> so, when I hit Chapter 11, I went Section 8. I uh, checked into Casa de Crackers. Oh, Michael, you should have come to us. Thanks for the TLC, JL, but to be honest, I dig these digs. I get three squares a day, I'm responsibility free, and every once in a while, that guy over there who thinks he's Sinatra gets this blonde nurse to put these go-go boots on and sing something stupid with him. Is, is she working today? Michael, you know, Stephanie thinks that she's responsible for your new digs. She's wrong. The scars are healing from my stephectomy. <laughs> but enough about me. Let me show you around. Ridge Valley isn't much, but I call it the home. <laughs> Got a smoke? I'm so sorry, I don't... Dick Loudon? Corinne Denby? I gave up cigarettes, you know. You just, you just, you just asked me for, for a smoke. It was a joke. <laughs> and, a, and a good one. What are you doing here? I'm uh, vis visiting my, my friend, Mike, Michael. The mine? <laughs> so, how, how, are you, how are you? I'm in a sanitarium, Dick. <laughs> I'm peachy keen. So what? What are you? What are you going to do? Just kind of take it, take it easy for a while. <clears throat> After I illustrated that how-to book of yours, I gave up technical art. I wanted to create with my soul instead of a ruler. Show the world my sensitive side. Time for your pill. I'll back off, Cookie. <laughs> Can't you see? I got company. <laughs> but you know, then the rejection started and. I took it bad. Eventually, it just all got to me, and I... I went psycho. So I checked into here. How, how long have you been here? A year and a half. <laughs> so what are you up to? Uh, I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to write a, a how-to book for kids. You got an illustrator? Well, I... Because if you don't, that you could sponsor me to do, a, you know, a couple of pictures. You know, maybe some of those furry things that kids like. 
The kind that go thunk when you hit him with your car? <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not sure that's Look, a just, good idea. Just tell the, <clears throat> the white coat, see, that I'm I'm working with you on a special project. Uh, it would be like therapy for me. Well, you know, maybe you know when the time comes. <laughs> oh, thanks, Dick. Uh, you have really boosted my spirits. Well, take 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 care. Yeah, thanks. Uh, oh. Dick, you already missed half the tour. Tell him who we missed, Joanna. Mark Twain. <laughs> He's rehearsing his one-man tribute to Hal Holbrook. Guess, guess who I ran into? Corinne Denby. That's who that was. Okay, Dick. Listen, slap your John Hancock on this baby and we're gone with the wind. Honey, I had a thought. Instead of writing a whole new book for kids, I'll adapt one that I've already written. Remember installation and care of your low-maintenance lawn sprinkler. That'll be a big request at Story Hour. <coughs> Dick, why did you have to bring Corinne here? The woman has problems. What, what are you talking about? Oh, I don't know. Maybe that loud, anguished wailing that came from her room all night? Jo Joanna, just, just because we don't... wail... <laughs> doesn't mean we, we should condemn someone who... Who, who wails. <laughs> Be, Besides, it, it kind of blotted out the sound of the fist banging against the wall. Dick, that was the sound of forehead meeting plaster. <laughs> Listen, it's still a little rough around the edges, but give me your honest opinion. Oh, oh, wow. That, 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 is, that is some sprinkler head. <laughs> And it, it, it looks uh, great uh, right, right next to that um, gi uh, giant daisy. No, that's not a daisy, Dick. That's Wesley Weasel. <laughs> do, you, do, you have any, do you have anything else? Let up, Dick. <laughs> I'll do more just as soon as I get rid of this damn headache. <laughs> It was horrible. You're, you're right. I, I mean, I, I can't let her ruin a potentially great, great book. I'll just have to gently tell her that I, I, I can't use her. At ease, Lodens. <laughs> Hello, Officer Shiflet. Official business? Just passing by. Got a yen to check your building for fire code violations? Why? Word on the street is you're housing one Corinne Denby. Your classic textbook, firebug. Well, she, she may be a, a little high strung, but I mean, she's not a firebug. For the record, it seems Miss Zippo <laughs> got a few rejection slips and took a flying leap off the deep end. Torched her own studio. Oh, my gosh. I, I'm, sh I'm sure she's, you know, she, she's fine now. She's... She's been in the, uh, the sanitarium for a, a year and a half. Sing me another one. <laughs> My brother's been in for years, and he still thinks he's Sinatra. <laughs> Can we get her to check out of here? I think Barbara Butane checked out a long time ago. <laughs> We're all adults here. Let's use big people talk. Rubbing this chick the wrong way is like putting nitro in a baby's rattle. <laughs> Kaboom. What do you think of my latest? Well, there's, there's Wesley. Uh, well, I, I don't mean to be picky, but we seem to be missing Wesley's head. All the animals supposed to have heads? Excuse me. I know you Ridge Valley people range from uh, a little off to king of banana land. But I was just wondering if you were anywhere near the same degree of craziness as my ex-boyfriend. That would be the mime. <clears throat> hmm. You see, Dick and Joanna won't tell me the truth. How is he? Does he cry out the name Stephanie in his sleep? 
No. Cupcake? No. Wonder Wanch? <laughs> Dreamsicle? Mommy? Uh, Stephanie, why don't we leave Dick and Corinne alone so they can talk? Uh, Corinne, can I, can I be, can I be honest with you? Well, of course, Dick. You're my friend. I, I trust you more than anybody else in the world. After all, you, you gave me hope. Well, you know, I know, I know you, <clears throat> I know you've had, you've had a couple, uh, couple rejections. Forty-one. <laughs> huh? Forty-one of those stinking little sheets of paper. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dick, I know. <laughs> fish. <laughs> you know, Terry, I was noticing all the, uh, all the queens have little holes where their eyes should be. <laughs> yeah? So? Well, isn't, isn't that a little oddball? <laughs> Is it oddball that all four queens kept staring at me? <laughs> like they were better than me? <laughs> they needed to be taught a lesson, Michael. You bet. <laughs> Any sixes? This, this is my first sanitarium gig. How about you? Same here. I was just your average Joe until she came along. She was so beautiful. We fell in love. Went out for a while. Broke up. Ditto on that data. <laughs> I didn't take it very well. I'm here, buddy. Locked her in the trunk of her car. <laughs> Drove to the pier. Got off on a technicality. Ah, oh, but you've heard this story a million times. <laughs> yeah, if I had a nickel. <laughs> Hello, Michael. Stephanie. Michael, is that the girl you broke up with? So basically she's up for grabs? <laughs> Keep her busy. I'll be back in a minute. Oh, Michael. What have I done to you? I did this to myself, ex-cupcake. Is it because you saw me having dinner with another man? Well, that, that was just part of it. I, I guess I just I needed a, a good rest. Did you have to rest here? Most of the people I know rest in Barbados. <laughs> Steph, I'm happy here. Happy? You're wearing paper slippers. <laughs> I'm through crying. All the tears have been sucked from my ducts. Well... Aren't you a pretty little thing? <laughs> Stephanie, is it? You know when my life began, Stephanie? The moment we met. I looked at you and felt myself come alive. Everything about you. The way you look at me. Staring at me. Like you're better than me. Like you need to be taught a Whoa. lesson. Four o'clock. <laughs> Visiting hours are over. Oh, my queen. The plans I've made for us. The thrills in store. I don't even know you. So that's how it is. <laughs> I see. Tell me, darling. What kind of car do you drive? What? Got a lot of trunk space? <laughs> she, she doesn't have a car. She, she rides a bicycle everywhere. Does it have a basket? <laughs> she has to go now. You know, my dove, I could escort you home if you just... Sign a little paper for me. I don't think so. No, it was worth a try. Last week, some bonehead sprung a firebug. <laughs> Bye, Michael. I'll come back and visit you again. Oh, I wish you wouldn't. It's too difficult for me. And him. 
<laughs> it was a pleasure, Stephanie. I'm sure we'll meet again. Ah, uh, I doubt it. And my name isn't really Stephanie. It's Joanna. <laughs> Joanna Loudon. And I'm taller than this. You have lovely hair, Joanna. My last girlfriend had hair just like that. See? Standing guard, George. I want to make sure this fire stays in the fireplace, if you know what I mean. Cranked out another batch, Dick. Oh, boy. <laughs> Say hello to Juanita Weasel. I, uh, I, I don't, I don't remember Wes, Wesley having a, <clears throat> having a girlfriend. That's for our next book. What, what, ne what next book? I got enough ideas floating around up here for 20 books. You and I are going to make one hell of a team. So what do you think? It's, uh, it's, 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 it's nice. Do you really like it? Actually, no. What? I, I don't mean this in, in, in a bad way, but there was, there was better stuff hanging in the trauma section at Ridge Valley. I, th I, thought, I thought you didn't smoke. I don't. This is my God, don't let me snap now, Pac. <laughs> What do you think, sweater girl? <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I like it. What? Well, it has a, a few problems. I see. <laughs> what do you think of my work, tool jockey? I'm scared, Dick. <laughs> Steady, George, steady. Well? I can't talk. <laughs> well, you don't have to hit me over the head. I mean, I've been on this side of rejection before. Damn. <laughs> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. So what? I can deal with it. If it wasn't for all that sunshine that you blew up my hospital gown, I would have gone back to technical drawing where I belong. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're finally being honest with yourself. Well, as long as I'm being honest, I think your book bites it. <laughs> but what's, what's wrong with my book? Wesley's eyes grew wide at the low-voltage shock he received from not properly grounding the AKV electronic timing system. Boy, Tick. There's a problem with that? George, you, you, you liked it, didn't you? Don't ask me. I've got problems of my own. I promised God that if I weren't burned alive, I'd become a priest. George, I'm sure he'll understand if you renege. Well, you're, you're both crazy. The, the, the kids will eat this up. Gee, you sure don't take rejection very well, Dick. <laughs> this, this is really good stuff. Phew, Wendell. We just installed the entire Aqua Wizard P246 automatic sprinkling system with the AKV thermal regulator. And it meets all state and local safety specifications. <laughs> ah. <laughs> this Sunday night, you can bask in the glow of one TV hit after another at the season's biggest bash, Nick at Night's Block Party Summer. It's TV hits in six show blocks every night. So stop by and stay cool. This Sunday, Lucy Sunday, only on Nick at Night.
Now, stay tuned for Dick Van Dyke, next, here on Nick at Night. Meow.